I'm Mega Mike the Movie Man, and today I got a Mega Movie Plan. Today, I'm back with another Mega Movie News Roundup for you all. This is a segment on the channel where I cover the most important movie news stories to come out this week, and I have five stories to cover with you all today, saving the most important story for the very end, and that's now the official confirmed runtime of Doctor Strange 2, the multiverse of madness. So make sure you watch throughout the entire video to get to that final story. Also, if I forget any movie news and you'd like me to feature it in a future movie news episode, just email me at megamikethemovieman at gmail.com. It's completely free. Just let me know your name and the movie news story you'd like to have featured. But without further ado, let's get started. Now to get into our first mega movie news story, and we're gonna talk about how Morbius has done so far. So let's take a look at the box office first. This is brought to us from Variety, and it looks like Morbius opening weekend has made about 40 five million dollars now to me that isn't absolute terrible but that isn't absolute great either but that amount of money actually has boosted up the global total to about 84 million so you know what i mean even though this movie didn't do amazing right it didn't do spider-man no way home levels i think for the movie that it is remember this is morbius okay does everybody know who morbius is no it's not like a spider-man movie where you go out on the street you ask somebody hey you know spider-man yeah of course they know spider-man or even like the batman you know the batman movie did better but i mean once again you ask somebody on the street they know who batman is but you ask them hey you know morbius oh a mobile what a Morbius? What's a Morbius? Like, we don't know what that is. Like, most people, in terms of general audience, is going to have no idea what people are talking about when they say Morbius. Of course, I know what Morbius is, so that's why I went out to the theater for it. But I was kind of predicting about this amount. I think I was at that 50 million range, so 45 million isn't too far off from that. And so, yeah, I didn't expect it to do much better than that. So there was a lot going against this movie, but at least it made some kind of money. And because this movie was made at such a low budget, it actually does have a chance to break even or to maybe even get a little bit profitable. It's probably going to have to make about $150 million or so is my guess to make some profit off of this one. But because it was made at such a low budget, they didn't spend too much on marketing, it does have a chance to get there. I think we're definitely going to get over $100 million with this movie, but there's a chance we could get over that $150 million mark, and that could definitely you know, be some celebration for Sony. But that was a smart plan, Sony, to make this movie for a cheaper amount. And that's more studios should learn from that and do that. You know, you can't expect all these movies to be a Spider-Man No Way Home level. So make a movie cheaper and then it doesn't have to do as well at the box office. Now we take a look at the Rotten Tomato score here because it's gonna tell us some more stories. So, wow, that critic score, we see 16%. This is not good for you know, for any movie. I mean, 16% is a really bad score, and this can possibly hurt the legs of this movie because once people see this score, they may think, you know what, I haven't heard so many good things about this movie. The critic score is really bad here on Rotten Tomatoes, so maybe I'll just wait for this movie to come out on streaming. You know, don't feel the rush to go out to the movie theater for this one. And that makes a lot of sense. So I think this movie might struggle in some future weeks to pick up some money, but I don't think a lot of people are going to even see it one time, let alone go back for multiple viewings. Now, I feel comfortable saying, hey, this is a movie I could see myself going out to see again. If, of course, there is no other movie playing, because it's a pretty short movie, and I know I had a fun enough time with it, even though it wasn't a great masterpiece of a movie, even though technically there are some things really uh, not great with the story and how it was all edited and put together at the end of the day, I think there was still some fun with the movie, so I'd be okay. Hey, maybe I'd go view that movie a second time. But I don't think most people are gonna be like that. I don't think most people are gonna see it one time. And I think the people that do go and see it one time 
are not going to go see it a second time. So that's going to hurt the legs on this movie. So I don't know if this movie is going to get to that break-even point. I don't know if it's going to make a profit. But let's look at these Rotten Tomato scores again. So we talked about the critic score at 16%. No good. But let's look at the audience score because the audience score is a little bit more promising. We see an audience score at 70%. Wow, that's a big gap between 16% and 70%. That's a big difference of opinion there. And to me, that kind of makes sense because once again, when you think about Morbius, we know from a critic standpoint, it wasn't technically well done. So of course, critics are going to mark that movie down for that. And that totally makes sense. But if you're just a general audience member, just going out to see a fun action movie, eat some popcorn, it's not too long of a movie you're gonna have a decent time i think when you walk out of the movie you're gonna be like yeah you know that i was entertained enough for it i don't think you're gonna be like oh that movie was just so awful i despise my whole experience with that movie and so that's why i think the audience score is a lot higher at 70 percent. so that is good news for this movie maybe people will look at the audience score and that will at least let them know, hey, maybe I should at least give it one watch. That's the only thing that could really help the movie at this point, in my opinion, is people looking at the audience score rather than the critic score. But yeah, it's yeah, it's really interesting to see the difference in the scores there and how large that gap is. And so we're going to have to see how this movie ends up doing. If I had to guess right now, I think it will at least get break even and hopefully a little bit profitable. But even if that's the case, do I think they're going to make a sequel to this Morbius movie? No, I do. I do not think we're going to get a Morbius 2, but I do think they'll keep using the Morbius character. And I actually have another video coming out tomorrow, I believe, that's going to talk about all the Morbius post credit scenes and where I think the future of this character is going to go. So definitely make sure you check out that video. But for now, let me know in the comments below, what did you think of Morbius? Have you seen it already? Do you think the critic score and the audience score makes sense? And in the long run, do you think this movie is gonna make some profit? Or if you think this movie is just not going to get there, let me know that as well. We'll have that discussion down below. Now we got our second mega movie news story. And apparently we have Bill Skarsgård that's going to be the star of the new Crow reboot movie. Wow, we're finally going to get The Crow as a rebooted movie. I mean, this movie has been talked about for many years now. There's been many different stars attached to this project before. I believe in even Jason Momoa, Aquaman, was attached at one point to be the Crow. And so it seems like, is this really true? Are we finally getting the Crow reboot? I think this time, yeah, I think we are going to get this movie. I think it's going to go into development here real soon. And hopefully they get that filming going and we actually get to see this movie. Now, am I super, super excited for a Crow reboot? Not really. I mean, the Crow movie, I did enjoy well enough, the original. But then there was a bunch of Crow sequels that never really intrigued me. So I never watched those. And I don't think I heard great things about them either. But yeah, I mean, was anybody asking for a Crow reboot? I don't know. I don't feel like I hear anybody ever talk about The Crow too much anymore. Yeah, I've heard it mentioned, but I never hear anybody saying like, hey, you know what we need? We need another Crow movie like ASAP. Let's get that Crow movie going. I feel like I don't hear that. So it is kind of interesting to see them wanting to do a Crow reboot here. I mean, it is a recognizable IP, I guess. I mean, if you do mention The Crow, I think there's a decent amount of people that will remember that character in original movie. But we'll have to see if this movie is going to be any good. But the good thing is we got Bill Skarsgård here who's going to be the Crow. And I think he's going to look like the Crow. Definitely once he gets that makeup put on there, I think he can do that character some justice. And he's like, you know, an anti-hero. So I think Bill Skarsgård could pull off that performance there. I mean, he did fantastic as a full-on villain as it you know, Pennywise. So I think he could bring, you know, a lot of physicality with makeup on to the Crow character. So I think it'd be interesting to see him, hey, not play a villain anymore, but play more of an anti-hero. 
I think I would want to see that from Bill Skarsgård. And he's a very talented actor. He's done other projects before. And his whole family is really talented in terms of um, movie creation and working in film. So I think I'm going to, you know, be a little cautious on this one. First, are we actually going to get this movie? Is it going to go into full-on development? Is this movie ever going to be released? So I'm a little cautious on that first, just because we've been done so many times wrong <laughs> before thinking we were going to get a Crow movie. So I'll be cautious on that. And then also just how is this movie going to turn out? I mean, what are they going to do to like revitalize the story? How are they going to make it new and fresh and entertaining again? That I'm also worried about. Is it actually going to be a good quality movie if it gets made? So two big concerns there. First, is it going to get made? And then what's the quality level going to be? But I mean, at least now they have a talented actor for the main character. So that definitely is a solid start. But let me know in the comments below. What do you think of the original Crow movie? Do you want a Crow reboot? And do you think this Crow reboot is actually going to happen? And we're going to finally see this movie. And do you think Bill Skarsgård is a good choice to play the Crow? Let me know that in the comments below. Now to get into our third mega movie news story and we got a set photo that shows the cast of the new Munsters movie coming out brought to us by Bloody Disgusting. And so the Munsters movie is being directed by Rob Zombie. Now I'm not super hyped up for this movie. I was never really a Munsters fan. I more so enjoyed the Addams Family myself. I think that's kind of how it was. You were either more of an Addams Family fan or you were a fan of the Munsters. So me personally, I always went with the Addams Family. But also why I'm not too excited about the Munsters movie is that you have Rob Zombie directing it. And to me, I've never really enjoyed the movies Rob Zombie has directed. Now, I enjoy Rob Zombie's music. I mean, he has some awesome songs. But once he gets to the directing, I don't know. It just doesn't work for me. What he's well known for is like the House of a Thousand Corpses, that trilogy of movies. I know some people really like that set of movies. To me, I didn't think they were anything special. So I've just never been a fan of those ones. But then once he did the Halloween movies, Halloween 1 and 2, when he tried to reboot that franchise, just no, I did not enjoy those Halloween movies at all. I think they were probably some of the weakest Halloween movies out of the whole bunch, if not the weakest ones, especially that Halloween 2. That Halloween 2 just was like, what is going on here? This just does not feel like a Halloween movie. So yeah, have been really disappointed with Rob Zombie's directing. So just not for me, but I think some people are a fan of Rob Zombie's directing. So definitely to each their own so yeah not really excited for the monsters movie but i'm gonna give it a try the one thing i do find really interesting though is that it's supposed to be a pg movie which makes sense because it's the monsters the monsters is supposed to be more family friendly so what's interesting though is because it's pg and it's rob zombie directing it rob zombie's done R-rated horror movies, really gruesome and graphic movies before. So you wouldn't think initially like, oh, you know what? He'd be a good director for the Munsters, right? A more family friendly movie. So I'm going to be intrigued kind of to see, okay, how is this movie presented to us? Because it's going to get a PG rating. Wow. Okay. Let's see what Rob Zombie can do with a more family friendly, you know, uh, I guess what would you say? Like gateway horror movie I guess you could say I don't know but yeah I mean that's the one thing that does intrigue me just because I've never seen Rob Zombie do something like that before but apparently it's like a passion project for Rob Zombie Rob Zombie seems to be a really big Munsters fan so maybe you know with his passion towards it he can give us something really great um, but another thing that concerns me too is that he puts his wife in the movie, I believe is the main character, uh, the, of the Munster family here. And I'm like, oh, Rob Zombie, you keep putting your wife in these movies. I get it. I get it. You want her to be a superstar. I understand, but I don't know. It's just like another little red flag that kind of pops up like, Hmm, you know, 
So we'll see if this ends up being any good. I'll definitely uh, check it out though and uh, let y'all know if it's worth it, uh, worth to see this one when it does come out. But let me know in the comments below, were you ever a fan of the Monsters? Are you a Rob Zombie fan? Are you excited to see Rob Zombie direct the Monsters? I mean, what do you think of all this story down below? Let's have that discussion. Now to get into our fourth mega movie news topic, and this is brought to us by Screen Rant, and we now have a director for the GameStop stock movie, and we have the director that directed I, Tonya, Pam and Tommy, Cruella, and I believe his name is Greg Giuseppe, if I'm saying that correctly. And so I'm excited about this movie. I think this movie is a fascinating story of how Reddit users band together to basically stick it to the man and stick it to Wall Street and just influence investments with GameStop and, you know, make some money in the process and all of that uh, just using Reddit. I mean, that is fascinating uh, stuff that's an interesting story right there so I'm intrigued to see how this movie is going to be done I mean how are they going to present this movie is it going to be a, a documentary style is it going to be just a retelling with live action I mean what's going to be the format here also what genre are you going to go with is it going to be a uh, straight up drama taken very seriously or is it going to be a comedy are there going to be comedic elements in there as well is it going to be a mixture of those genres i'm going to find it really fascinating just to see how they present this movie to us and i'm excited because i do like this director i think the director has done some good work already everything i've seen from the director has been done well i mean cruella i thought was a really well done movie i thought pam and tommy was a series that was well done and i actually thought it was directed quite well i mean each episode was pretty intriguing and in how the story is revealed and so if he can bring this to another movie here to really tell this interesting story i think we could have something really good on our hands here so I'm excited for what this movie is going to have to offer. Hopefully they make it a movie that's both informative, but also entertaining as well. Kind of like, once again, going back to the Pam and Tommy show. I learned so much from that show. I didn't know much about the Pam and Tommy scandal before. So I learned about that. But then it was also a very entertaining show as well. So hopefully we can get that same combination together for this movie. But I do like they're going with a movie on this one and not a series because there's probably not enough info here to make it into a full-on series i think a quick movie let's keep it a shorter movie i think that could really pack a good entertainment value there and so yeah i think we'll get a lot more information a lot more of a vibe to what this movie will be when we see a first trailer on this one and as we get more news about it but initially i am pretty interested in this movie just kind of from a business standpoint just to see wow these online users were able to do this much just working together. I mean, that is just such a interesting story that I don't think has ever happened before. But then I think they were able to do something similar with like the AMC investing. Hey, that could be a sequel. They do this movie. If it does well, then they do the AMC investing and all that. So yeah, I think this could work for a movie here. But let me know in the comments below. Are you excited for this GameStop stock movie? Are you intrigued by it at least? And do you think this is a good directing choice? Let's have that discussion down below. Now to get into our fifth and final and most important mega movie news topic for today, we now have the Doctor Strange 2 runtime confirmed. And now we're at two hours and six minutes. Now this is brought to us by MovieWeb, and this time is a lot shorter than what was originally rumored, which was closer to a two hour and 30 minute runtime. So what does this runtime mean? Well, it means this movie is going to move at a lot quicker speed, and hopefully it's the right runtime for this movie. To me, the runtime isn't going to decide if a movie is good or not good. Each movie has its own perfect runtime. Sometimes when we see a movie, we're like, 
Wow, that needed to be a lot shorter. Let's cut out some scenes. Let's make it a shorter movie. Sometimes when we see a movie, we're like, hey, you know what? We could have gone a little bit longer. Maybe we've gotten 15 more minutes out of this movie and that could have served the characters and story a little bit more. So we're gonna have to really decide, is this the right runtime when we see the movie? So I like shorter movies personally more often than not. That doesn't mean I won't see longer movies. I see tons of long movies, but I do like when movies move at a little quicker pace. So I do find this good news for me personally. I know some people may be like, oh, you know what? I prefer longer movies like the Batman. Some people prefer that length of a movie to me. That movie was way too long. So I'm hoping that this is the right runtime for Doctor Strange 2. And I just don't know what we're getting with this movie yet. I mean, the trailers have been awesome. It looks really cool, but I still am a little confused on what the full on story is here. I know some characters that are gonna show up that we've seen in the trailer, right? We're gonna get Wanda, we're gonna get Professor X, but what's the story here? What is the main plot? I have no idea, which gets me super excited for the movie though, because I just can't wait to have it revealed to me. And I hope it's a really strong, well put together, solid story. And I do hope it's not just too many cameos thrown all over the place just for fan service purposes. As long as the story is good and if they do do the cameos, it adds to the story narrative, then I'm okay with that. But I do hope it's all in service of the story. So what do you think of this runtime now? I mean, I'm okay with a two hour and six minute runtime, but do you think this runtime may be too short for a movie that's called Multiverse of Madness? Let me know that in the comments below. So that will do it for another Mega Movie News Roundup episode 15. If you missed any of the last couple episodes, I will leave those video links in the description below. Also, if you missed my review of Mobius, I will leave that video link in the description as well. And if you're just discovering the channel for the first time, make sure you subscribe right now. I'm going to get you tons of movie news, movie reviews, rankings, movie hauls, unboxings, you name it. We'll talk all things movies on this channel, and this will be your one-stop shop for all things movies because I do post daily. So make sure you turn on that notification bell so you don't miss when I post a video. Come on. Come on. Do it. Do it. Come on. Come on. Also, like the video. And this is Mega Mike the Movie Man reminding you to make every day a movie day.